Counter-Strike has been around for a long time, and during its primordial years, some famous people emerged. We got nothing, the My Got Troll clan, a ton of esports clans, and the greatest level designer to ever grace Counter-Strike 1.6, Nipper. Ooh, ah. Nathaniel Miller, hailing from New York, was a teenager who became smitten with CS. Being an avid player, he soon started making levels for it. The guy created over a hundred different levels for the game, which is a ton of time and work. His levels range from serious reality-based maps to really bizarre and outlandish-looking places. But before we get to the maps, let's set the scene. Nipper was a rather grandiose character in the CS scene. A lot of people played his maps but never knew where to find him or where he played. But what players could collect about him was that he plastered his name in every level he made, hit secret rooms in his maps, really hated the op, and got his name from Nipper the Dog, a British icon. His maps were famous, yet he was elusive. Nipper greatly inspired me and a friend with his levels. So one day my friend told me, dude, I know where Nipper hangs out, the Rocks Hideout 4 server with the Jota 2 form guys. All of that was Greek to me, but damn did I want to see Nipper in action. We didn't have social media to search people up on, and I had played tons of his levels up to this point. I thought, wow, playing alongside the creator of Air Fight 2, that's awesome. So one faithful night when Nipper's server was playing the Wallace and Gromit themed map titled Chicken Run, we joined up, and there he was. Nipper in all his glory, absolutely raining shit down on all the plebeians on his map. The man was mythic to me. I couldn't believe it was him. Me and my friends started frequenting the server in the Jodot 2 forms to get a glimpse of the legendary designer. We even started trying to make levels ourselves because of Nipper. He was so cool, and let me tell you why. What Nipper did best was create car maps. Some normal cars, sometimes extravagant ones, or just flat out bizarre, insane vehicles. He was the king of drivable vehicle maps. You see, CS 1.6 had this special little entity called Funk Vehicle. Funk Vehicle was this wacky entity that lets you take anything and make it into a car. Fun, however, it's a super volatile entity that makes drivable vehicles a death sentence because of how buggy it is. This is likely why the entity went missing in the Source engine and why Nipper still to this day frequently puts an ode to it on his Twitter account and new map releases. Let me elaborate on the death trap though. Here's a player's hitbox. If a player's hitbox intersects with a moving brush entity the wrong way, the game decides you die. If you crouch or jump in the vehicle, you're probably gonna die too. And if you're a passenger, you'd better really trust who's driving because you're more likely to die while not operating the vehicle. This sounds like a pain in the ass, right? Well, it is, and that's partly the magic of it. We loved cruising around with the imminent feeling of death right around the corner. There was an art to it, a certain je ne sais quoi, and one of the most fun things to do is kill your teammates with your car, especially when friendly fire was off, because that's what you could do with a funk vehicle. Also, all the crazy stuff Nipper made into cars, and there's tons of crazy vehicles. His most famous creation, the Crazy Tank, was adorned across CS 1.6, a long, twisting path of rocky quarters that just barely fit this massive tank. It was an intimidating beast of a vehicle, and being hunted down by T's while driving this thing was a pure adrenaline. Rush. What I like best about it is that it has crazy in it, and he spelt it wrong, so let me just uh, fix that and perfect. Nipper had tons of car maps. Some notable ones were the G.I. Joe cars, featuring some of the toys and vehicles from the action figures in the show. I personally love Big City 1 and 2 because it was just like GTA, but in Counter-Strike. Nothing like killing an enemy player, looting their corpse, and taking their car. I also really love these drivable entries in his Lord of the Rings levels he made. Just so creative, I mean, look at these things, so spooky. I also loved his pit-style maps, where you drive off these ramps and smash the cars below yours in hopes that you don't die on the way down. Hopefully your vehicle does a cool backflip when you land too. In those days, no one was really maximizing the potential of Funk Vehicle the way Nipper was. The only time we saw Funk Vehicle used seriously was in the beta versions of CS on CS Siege, and it was removed later due to its buggy and ridiculous nature. Now on to more grounded maps. As exciting as vehicle maps were in Nipper maps, Nipper also made more serious works. Like D.E. Van Gogh. If you don't know who Van Gogh is, well, he's a Dutch painter who cut off his ear and sent it to a lover. I'm no historian, but Nipper designed a map where you're inside a world of his art pieces. Fuck my ass, this is a sweet room, dude. It's fascinating how he blended all the most famous works of Van Gogh and made them into a cohesive level. Ah, that starry night skybox. Mm. Fuck 
Fuck yeah, dude. What about Anna Rommel? For those of you Saving Private Ryan fans, this is a replica of the final battle scene in the movie where Tom Hanks finds Matt Damon. With the limitations of the engine, this is a stellar rendition of the movie set. In fact, one of the things Nipper did best was recreate movie settings in CS. A.S. Moria is a shining example of this. Ever wanted to experience the assault on Helm's Deep? Well, he did that too. In fact, he made a ton of maps surrounding the Tolkien film trilogy. It was just so goofy, yet really cool someone could take the time to break down a scene enough to create a level around it. I'm sure he sat there frame by frame looking at those movies to do these replications. Just so inventive, like his other movie map series, Black Hawk Down. These maps were the coolest because CS fit into them perfectly. The dusty, chaotic, and rubble-ridden streets of Somalia depicted in CS was just phenomenal. You really felt like you were a part of the movie in these levels, and of course, those Hummers. Mwah, they look so good. Okay, but what about the bizarro world maps I had mentioned earlier? Okay, I'm excited about this part, so let's dig in. Blah, what a map, wow. Bla is truly the greatest map CS 1.6 ever saw, period. I know, subjective, whatever. Some may say Westwood is the best custom map, which Nipper also made, but to me, it doesn't even come close. As wacky and insane and confusing this map is initially, you come to find out that it's really well balanced. Once you memorize it, it's more like a creative dust too. The bomb sites are right next to each other and all the routes eventually lead you to them. There's a good measure of verticality to it, so you really feel this sneaky element of surprise. People dropping in from the sky in the crazy tank part, or even this Hieronymus Bosch room, however you say that. Every single room in this map is something incredibly unique. T-Spawn is this vaporwave space region. CT-Spawn is a literal masterpiece. I mean, where did the inspiration come from for this room? The doors in a sprawling endless white space that teleports you? My god, I love it. There's a brain in this level, it's so juicy and grotesque, and we talked about the Crazy Tank earlier, right? How about a mini version of Crazy Tank? Is that not amazing? It's just mind-blowing, taking a prior creation and miniaturizing it. It's a level inside of a level. What? Oh, and the sky corridor that drops you into the crazy tank part that plays Pink Floyd's Us and Them? It's just so genius and homey. One thing I love about this map is the textures, because most of all the textures in the map are custom. This really shows a level of separation from most mappers at the time. And some of these textures are just flat out bizarre. Like this pudding thing? What even is that? How about this creepy face thing that follows you in the tunnels? Or this other creepy face that periodically appears in the map? Or these cubes that move? There's so many unique design pieces in this level, and CS never saw anything like it before. And this is just one of the psychedelic maps he made. The map title Duh is also an incredibly bold piece. It follows the same wacky formula, like these twisting hallways, or this kinked road leading to the club bomb site. I also love that he found some way to create a faux mirror in this room. And this little tree with peaceful music in the background. Blah and Duh were absolute juggernauts in the map rotation. They always got voted for in the server, and people just couldn't get enough. When most people played CS 1.6, they expected some semblance of realism, and these two levels threw that out the window and threw the window out the window. As we can see, Nipper's prowess was way ahead of its time for CS 1.6, but he wasn't always this inspired or skilled. Looking back at his earliest maps back in 2001, a map titled Building wasn't the most inspired looking creation, but I love seeing this level. It's a testament to the old adage, walk before you run. Many of the assets in the level were prefabs from Half-Life 1, and the blocky nature of the level really shows you what his skill level was like with the Valve Hammer Editor software at the time. A lot of his early creations aren't much to scoff at, but they really lend a perspective into level design from that era. When Counter-Strike Source came down the barrel, Nipper announced one of the saddest things I had ever heard in my entire life. He's moving on to the Source engine. There was a lot of excitement around the Source engine at the time, and Nipper wanted to create levels on it. Full stop. No more CS 1.6. It was over. Done. At this point, he had spent several years decimating in CS 1.6, and a new adventure awaited. Nipper released his final map for CS 1.6, DECCHQ. A really cool level with, of course, drivable vehicles. This was the pinnacle of a Nipper-style map. Long, blocky, drivable exteriors with a G.I. Joe-style base ready to be encroached on with mini crazy tanks. There was one last hurrah on the Nipper map server featuring Nipper himself and his loyal Cherry Clan, and it was done. We were moving on from CS 1.6. Forever. But I couldn't believe it. I thought, how could Nipper abandon over a hundred different maps on CS 1.6 to move on to Source? Why? Just why? 
we'd be leaving behind some of the greatest vehicle maps to ever grace Counter-Strike 1.6. This was baffling to me as Source didn't support Funk Vehicle, so his map repertoire would be extremely diminished. It seemed everyone on the Joe.2 forums agreed with this move to Source as well. It was time to move on. Source was, to put it simply, way more exciting. The engine was newer and more capable. We all thought, what could Nipper do with all these new resources? I sometimes reflect on the saddest days of my life, and as silly as it sounds, Nipper moving to the Source engine was one of the greatest travesties I had ever experienced up until that point in my life. At 13 years of age, this was a truly somber moment for me. Everyone was giving up on Gold Source era CS 1.6 just like that. I was left in the dark. I didn't know I was in the good times until they were gone. So Nipper moved to Source and had tons of luck with the popularity of his maps. DE Westwood really popped off and became the quintessential custom map in Source. Some people thought it was a default map by Valve because it was played so frequently on servers. There have been hacked versions of it, much to the dismay of Nipper. He did port some of his popular CS 1.6 maps to Source, like Blah and Xmas Nipper House, but I always thought the feeling wasn't the same. As many members of his gaming clan were getting older and much of the Joe.2 community was getting older too, the days of our gaming meetups grew smaller. More and more games were coming out that took the community away from Counter-Strike. People were working, starting families. It seemed like the prime time years of CS Nipper maps were on the horizon behind us. I can't help but think if we only stayed on CS 1.6, we could have kept the magic alive, but that's not what happened. There were a few stragglers from the Joda 2 community that remained, but were long gone in a few years' time. Nipper's level design started to slow down toward the end of the CS Source reign. It was rumored that Activision had offered him a job, which he refused, because he was more comfortable not making making levels as a job. He had other endeavors he wanted to partake in and games to play. So the big question is, where is Nipper now? Well, he used to float around the old 2001 Jota 2 forums where he accumulated over 10,000 posts. Sadly, the forums have been defunct for a good while now as the website has primarily moved over to a Discord server, but you won't see him interacting there much, and why would he? Nipper has always been somewhat of an elusive character. He rarely did interviews or interacted with fans. It even says so on his bio today. Outside of the occasional tweet, he mainly keeps to his own lane and intermittently releases maps for CSGO. You can still see some uploads happening from him in the Steam Workshop, but not at the same intensity as the past. I know in my case, Snipper was the greatest inspiration to ever enter my life. While kids looked up to superheroes or their dad, I just wanted to become an incredible level designer like Nipper. In his defense, having super fans like me back in those days was probably more annoying than enlightening, which is probably why he's still so quiet to this day. But for a brief time, we were gaming buddies. He took me under his wing during the Battlefield 2 and 2142 days, which still gets my brain beaming with excitement, as I was so thankful to be in the company of someone I truly looked up to. I even have the screenshot from when I stole a knife kill off of him in 2142. Good times, buddy. In conclusion, Nipper left behind a legacy of inspiration to everyone who interacted with his maps. The levels were infectious, like a virus all over Counter-Strike. Even the most rigid hardcore default map players in CS certainly had one of his maps floating around in their hard drive. I love Nipper because he showed me that games could be manipulated beyond what they're sold as. You can squeeze more entertainment and breathe new life into games when you customize them. He inspired tons of level designers to play with the Funk Vehicle Entity and changed the culture of CS just by creating levels. I didn't have many heroes growing up, but one hero I'll always hold true to my heart is the king of level design himself, CC Nipper. Thank you for everything you did for CS.